Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today I'm going to show you that we have set up again a bitnet among mainframes and among uh, mainframe enthusiasts to recreate what was once the biggest network on earth before the advent of the internet. It was called bitnet and it was a cooperative between some universities in the US and then later on it was expanded to some universities in Europe um, which I think was called CREN and, um, and even a network of universities in Israel called Israelnet and, um, and all these universities were linked either with, uh, with dial-up modems, say 9600 bots or with list lines uh, but, mo but quite a few were still based on switched uh, lines and the interesting thing is that the protocol the on uh, here are, you have all the so it was called bitnet in the US in Europe it was called urn in Israel it was called Israel urn vidyanet in in India and golfnet in some uh, gulf states uh, here is cren the one that i just mentioned before so um, bitnet was at one point as i said the largest network and it was based on the protocol, protocol defined by the IBM VM uh, operating system, which includes a communication um, component called RSCS, Remote Spooling Communication Subsystem. And in there, there's a network job entry protocol. It's a very simple protocol. It's like a keyword and uh, and response protocol but the main thing to say about this protocol network job entry is that it is not a point-to-point -point protocol such as we have in the internet today it is um, it, 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 it performs what it does through a uh, something called store and forward uh, what it means is that if 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 uh, computer a is linked to computer C not directly but only because both of them a and c are connected exclusively to point b to computer b then a can send a message to c because b will store and forward the message until the connection to c is established and back again so by having the store and forward protocol even when you had unreliable connections like you of course had back in the 80s when bitnet was very popular you could uh, you could send messages and files to another user and another computer, and uh, and uh, all the computers in between would store and then forward the content until that link was established again. So the the concept of link and nodes are not quite the same thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Whereas in the internet, the link and the node is one and the same thing, mostly. But um, so uh, I already made a video a couple of maybe about a year ago showing that I had connected two mainframes over the channel to channel adapter and um, and we were uh, connecting these two mainframes they were VM ESA machines running on P390 cards which I've shown in a video before but um, we could not have true network job entry between two mainframes over TCP IP emulation because we lacked the network job entry protocol over TCP IP. But somebody went and wrote support for it. And, uh, and nowadays we can actually link our mainframes together and we have, and that's what I'm gonna show in this video. So uh, the, the um, critical component that uh, Ivan Warren wrote, the ITCP NGE, is this one, TCP NGE. Um, written uh, by Ivan Warren, who works with me, and uh, a genius uh, developer, uh, really a very, very knowledgeable person and everything uh, that when it comes to mainframes. He wrote this uh, support for emulating the NGE protocol over TCP IP connections. Once we had that in place, we could now connect our mainframes to each other and re-establish bitnet and that's what this video is about so i have here to show you what we have created so far i have a couple of thermal windows to different systems um, let's remove that okay so let's make this a little bigger 
And what I have here is three mainframes. Um, they're VM370 machines. Um, let me connect here. Okay, so we have three machines, each in a different place on Earth. One is in Florida, one is in Chicago, and another one is in Texas, but they could be anywhere. And, uh, and so these three machines are connected to each other by means of a network job entry protocol, which by the way was also emulated very nicely on uh, VMS, Open VMS, and even on Unix back in the day. So, and there's no reason why we couldn't uh, get the Unix protocols for NGE revived again, so we could also connect Unix machines. But the commands were all the same and the usage patterns were all the same. And that's what we're going to show in this video. So first, let us show. let me show you what we have here. Um, this is one of the nodes called Moshix. This is another node called Moshix 2, and those are PM370 machines. Um, running in the cloud and then I have my ZPDT mainframe here uh, which is running in my office and uh, and that's a ZVM 6.4 machine as you can see here uh, I'll try to make this as large as I can but you're supposed to watch these videos on a larger on a larger screen not on your phones because the text is just going to be too small and necessarily anything involving terminals you always have a lot of text so that's just the nature of this channel okay so um, on this on this uh, machine here make this one a little bigger for I have um, I have the protocol running and as you know in VM everything is a service machine so if I do if I show what's running right now you will see that there is this service machine running RSCS which is the machine that supports the NGE protocol and then I have some online users and uh, and I'm user made so what I can show you is that I have a couple of connections about five connections here and these are links these are not nodes that's the important thing to understand these are not nodes these are links and I have five links going on and um, one is Moshix2 which is this machine as I said thousands of miles away and another one is this machine here uh, again thousands of miles away now Moshix 2 and Moshix 3 are not directly connected to each other they can only reach each other through the link of this machine here where I'm typing this on okay Moshix this one is in the middle that's why I'm putting this one kind of this terminal session in between because this one and this one don't talk directly to each other they can only talk through this uh, host here, through this link. And that's what store and forward means. So let me show you how we can use our BitNet. I call it, by the way, HNet, uh, just the way I call it. You can call it the uh, Mickey Mouse Net. I just like to call it that way. Everybody calls it differently and may call it differently. I just call it HNet for uh, emulated network. So uh, let's start with some very simple commands. I can, for instance, tell main at moshix2, which is again, uh, everything now has a user ID and the host. And you need to know the user ID and host, kind of like with email addresses today. You need to know where a certain user on which email system they're on to send them an email address, uh, to send them an email, right? So same thing here. And I can say hello from YouTube. Oh, sorry, I just sent it to myself here. Uh, named at Moshix2. Hello from YouTube. And if we do it this way, you see that I just got a message from this machine. So sending messages is one of the easiest things you can do. Um, I can also find out something about this machine. So I wrote myself here a little script, um, type ps exit, kind of like the ps command in Unix, where I want to see what's running on this machine. So here's the command, uh, yeah. special message to the RSCS um, 
guest machine or service machine command to the host mushix2 as you can see here and then I can put in cpqn for names okay now this will send this message first to RCS to my RCS service machine on this host on this mainframe then it will forward RCS will forward this command this later part of the command over to this machine this will process it and send the response back so as you can see here this is what's running right now on machine Moshix2 so I just executed the command on a remote machine to sue is logged on uh, I can also do RCS um, command Moshix2 Q sys which means show me the connections the links that you have now these are not the links on this machine it's going to go and get the links from this machine and as you can see moshix2 is only connected to moshix so it's not connected to anything else however i can still from here reach all the machines that from moshix2 i can reach all the machines that moshix itself can see because moshix will store and forward commands to every, everywhere else including to this machine so let me give you an example if i say um, ps moshix3 which is show me what's running on moshix3 which again moshix2 cannot directly see needs to go through moshix uh, the main node it will now send it here to this machine this machine will process send it then to this machine here and it will get the reply back obviously this takes all a little bit of time because it's going thousands of miles each direction and you can see here that moshix3 is running i can also see uptime moshix3 and it will now go find out how long this machine has been running and what operating system it is running it's sending it now and to this machine which sent it here got the answer back and forwarded it again store and forward so you can see here it's a zvm uh, 6.4 uh, ipl at the end of september i can also find out i can even find out what kind of cpu this is running on right so i can say special message rcs command moshix3 cpq cpu id what kind of view Oh, I spelled it wrong. So I'm asking now, what kind of CPU are you running on? And it's going to go there, store and forward to this host. The reply will come here. And so it tells me CPU model 1090, which is a CPDT, ZPDT IBM mainframe. And this is the CPU. Um, I can also do... Um, what is the time over there so I can query the time on this host and again this takes a couple of seconds okay it is Sunday 17th of November I can do it from here as well of course special message to RCS uh, command moshix2 CPQ names what's running there so now again from here it's going to go to this host which is the only host that both can directly see and it's going to get me some information now as we saw I have some other links here some other people that I work with so I can of course do the same thing with them I can I can do what's running on machine What's wrong with this machine? So again, this machine is not connected to this host, but it's connected to a host that knows that host. And so that host is gonna store and forward the commands and get the response back, which should arrive now any second. That is now in Europe, completely different continent. And so it travels quite a bit under the ocean and it will eventually get the result back. Um, well, actually, I think this machine has disabled querying um, what's running there and of course enable disable all these commands for other people 
So in this case, I think it's disabled, which is fine. Um, now, the other thing we can do, of course, other than have like a chat going on and send each other messages, we can also send each other files. So I can do send file uh, first. Let's uh, x YouTube text a. This is from YouTube. Okay, so now we want to send this file. YouTube text. We say send file. YouTube text a to main at Moshix2. So we say at Moshix2. And we send it. And as you can see, I immediately got here a notification that I got a file. So I can now go in here and I can say peak pf11. And here's the file. I already got it. Another thing we can do is we can send emails. Note. Um, I can do node uh, main at Moshix and I can send an email here saying hello from the Moshix 2 mainframe. And when I'm done, I press the 5 send and I see that I got an email. And I can peek and here's the email. I can of course store it. Um, I can receive it. PF9. Add it to all notebook. So and here I have, a, I have all my emails. So Email works, sending files works, executing remote commands work, if you allow it, obviously. Now, the, interest, the most interesting thing is um, the routing, right? So as you, can, you can change the routing on the fly, and that will show the configuration files in a second, but you can also say RCS uh, route motion, well, it doesn't make sense to do it here, but RCS route Moshix 3 to Moshix. So which means I'm I'm now telling it that to get to Moshix 3 I have to go through the link Moshix, which already was defined like that, but I'm I can redefine it um, at runtime. So we can we can work with that and kind of define the routing maps either in the configuration file or on the fly. Now let's look at the configuration file here a little bit. I have uh, here is the configuration. So let's make this a little bigger. You can see I define my own node name here, and then I'll define all the links, and I need to give it a network address. Now, network address 90, each one of those is a TCP IP NGE emulator in Hercules for my VM370. And then I define the routing table, and who has uh, permissions to do what, and that's about it. It's very, very simple. And then when I, uh, when I start RSCS, the communication service machine, it will read the configuration file and start uh, connecting to the various networks. So as you can see here, um, of course, I could now also say special message RSCS drain and if I do that, of course, the link was going to go down and we're not able to communicate anymore. 
but um, we could restart it then later on. Right, we can actually try it if, if you're interested in seeing that. So let's drop this link. And so now if I say, show me the links, you'll see link inactive. And same here, Moshix2 host, the link to the Moshix2 host is inactive. Now we can start it by saying rcs.moshix2 and I have to do the same thing here start moshix and after a while the sign on is complete they sign on to each other and they're connected again so I can try it out tell main that moshix testing yeah and I just got the message here testing so um, you can see that uh, you can start and stop these links there's some error correct connect correction and error handling so that all works fine and um, now what I would like to show is we can also do remote printing so the way to send something to remote printer is the following way I actually wrote a script so we can all have it on the screen at once. I call it netprint. It's just a small text script. It's netprint. Um, it tags the device print with Moshix printer. So what we're doing here is we, we're tagging everything that goes to the printer with the tags Moshix for the, for the node and printer for where it's going. So the destination is going to be the printer on host Moshix, which is here. And then we spool all the printer that we print from this user here, from this main user on this machine, we spool it to the RSCS service machine, which when it receives, it looks at the tags. It sees the tags as meant for host Moshix. And so it sends it to the RSCS service machine on this host, which receives it and it says, oh, it's for me, but it's for user printer or for the device printer. And then it starts printing. Um, and then, of course, we just say print, which is the normal CMS command for printing anything. So we can actually try. Let's see what we have. Okay, we have something here. Um, we have the um, definition for the I.O. map, what, what devices are where on this mainframe. As you remember, older VMs, such as VM370, you have to tell it where the devices are, the, the hardware addresses. The newer versions such as ZVM, which is running on my ZPDT, they auto sense the devices as the machine comes up and is, as it IPLs. Okay, but right now we're just looking into this part here. So there is a printer here, query. I have a printer here. Uh, attached to this machine but I don't have any printer attached to this machine so um, and what I did is I have as you know uh, the Herc print um, the amazing Herc print utility by Fish if you do any serious um, if you do any serious mainframe stuff and I've said this many times in this channel then you should head over to self dev labs which is the company run by Fish, the main maintainer of Hercules, and go get yourself this utility here. It produces, it connects remotely by socket to a, a mainframe printer a port on Hercules, and then reads the output and produces very beautiful output. Um, and so we're gonna do this right now and show you how we can print um, remotely so I'm attached to this mainframe here with my Herc print utility as you can see here okay um, and oops so now I just say net print um, Moshix net print what is it called uh, and if we pay attention here the the, re the finished output should come right here. So I uh, see. Yeah, it's already arriving. 
and it's turned being turned to the PDF and now we can open it as you can see I get the beautiful printout and here is my assembly of the input output map make it larger for you to see yeah, I have the punch holes and it's a PDF I can email it to somebody but the most beautiful part of it is and if you know me and you know the kind of work that I've done in this channel I use of course a 1403 uh, font the original font which you can always see from the T's because it's very simple font just one bar like this and one bar like this um, so yeah I can actually give it any font I like and we can do this at will right so I can uh, I can print this script itself so net print uh, net print exec a and it should arrive here any second here it is already it's all very fast so remember this goes from this host here to this host who then prints it out and then from where I'm right now at home I'm connecting to this machine to receive the finished outputs oops where, 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 where? here so I'm opening it and here somewhere should be the script I ah, hear it is <laughs> okay tag uh, etc after what we just said now I can also do it from the other host from my ZPDT machine I can say mm, x YouTube x A Okay, so now I say net print and it should arrive here any second. Oh, it's already here. Yeah. So from anywhere I can print here. Let's see if we can find Atari Forever. Here it is. So that works fine so I can print from anywhere and I can start and stop links I can change the routing table on the fly I can the only thing that is kind of cumbersome still is chatting so if I want to send a message from this user to this user then I have to do tell named at motion 2 testing which arrives here soon here it is testing and then if I want to enter to say tell main at motrics got it and I will show up here any second now yeah um, this is not of course not the typical chatting chat program so together with Peter Jacob who is one of the uh, porters of Rex to MVS 3.8 in my previous video we're attempting as writing a chat program so that people can launch a chat program on both hosts and start having like a split screen chatting kind of like the Linux uh, talk program talk you know this one talk root oh no it's not installed Out, install. Yeah, so this is how you would do chatting on a, on a Unix system, among others. So, kind of, we are aiming to do the same thing. Um, so, um, there's about, I wouldn't say maybe 15 to 20 hosts right now on our HNet, on our revived BitNet and um, you of course have to ask to peer with somebody peering means that exchanging link information so they can link up to each other and then of course getting an information about what they have behind that one link so they can build a routing table as i showed in the rscs config file but it's very very simple to use very reliable um, this has been up for a while now very uh, very reliable 
and it's a lot of fun. So now we have mainframes that are connected to each other and they're not just sitting there uh, being single user systems almost. Because one of the big things that, that you know, changes from the real mainframes as they were in back in the 80s to today is that back then you had many users per mainframe, hundreds of users. And today, because we can run uh, VM370 or MVS on Hercules, it's become almost a single user operating system because each user run is running a copy, is running its own mainframe. But that's not fun. It's much more fun when you have users on your machine. So for instance, here, I think uh, I can send tell Peter at Moshit you're being filmed for YouTube. Please respond. Um, so if he's logged, I know he's logged in, but if he's at his terminal right now and if he feels like it, then Peter could answer right now. And, um, and that's the fun, right? If you have multiple users per machine and if you can start then main, connecting those machines you're really getting this um, our hobus community our our enthusiast communities of mvs and vm and dos vs we're giving a whole new dimension because that's uh it brings elevates the fun to a whole new uh, uh, level and i'm um, having a hell of a time playing with this and i'm so happy that we finally managed to recreate uh, bitnet as hnet as i said in other places the um the open vms guys for a while uh, open vms hacknet they've had their own network for a while because they call it the hacknet the hope is tech network network for all the open vms and rx rsx 11 uh, enthusiasts and actually i'm on that the network as well and i've shown a video here in the past on this channel and uh, and we've uh, we didn't have something like that until very recently for the mainframe community the mainframe enthusiast community uh, hobbyist community and so now we do and we can now uh, link up to each other the only thing that you need is a fixed ip because if you have an ip that keeps changing then those connections are gonna you know you'll have to reconfigure your um, your Hercules each time that these IPs change and so that's kind of a hassle because um, you may have to re-IPL your system so you, what you need is a fixed IP or one that doesn't change very very often and then you need to obtain the patches for Hercules you patch it for TCP NGE network job entry which is simple to do and once you've done that, then you ask somebody if you can connect to them, if they want to connect to you. And of course, uh, if you have anybody wants to connect with me and this series about running it, it has a fixed IP, I'll be happy to peer with you and connect my mainframe to yours and we can start exchanging stuff and have fun. So um, obviously security is not um, much. Oh, here is Peter. What, you want to scare me to death? <laughs> uh, well, Peter, you're on my mainframe, and I'm uh, and I'm filming you you now for uh, this video on YouTube. Uh, let me answer him. So that's why I'm saying it's fun, right? So if you want to peer with me and you have a, a, a machine that's always up and you have a fixed IP, you please uh, contact me. I'll be happy to peer with you. So um, this is fun. And um, I hope this will grow over time and we're going to have uh, a vibrant uh, NGE network, a BitNet uh, protocol running again in the in the cloud now uh, what I also wanted to show is that Marist college um, they're running a copy of the 
conference system that was running on top of BitNet back in the 80s. Um, let me see if I can find it. No. I think it's at uh, VM. I actually have it on my phone. Oh yeah, VM. Marist. Marist is a mainframe driven university because they are very close to the IBM campus in uh, New York State. And yeah, so here's the archive of the kind of discussions that were going on on the on over bitnet back in the day so let's see if we can find something called bitnet yeah so they were sending each other notes and we saw just before how those notes were working um, I can take this one so you can see you had those discussions And they would just append to each other. So they would take up uh, a topic and then the discussion was ongoing by appending. This is not a good example. Let's see. Not a good example either. Yeah. So here people would append. And so that's how they would have a discussion. And this is the note, the same note that we were just looking at before. Note. Uh, named at mshix2 and as you can see here you can uh, you can append to this discussion and um, and then they will send it to each other and then people would receive those and uh, that's how they would have conversations and um, you can actually follow all the conversations from the 80s until I think about early 2000. See here, BitNet. Uh, this is how they would have these uh, discussions. So, um, lots of interesting topics you can see here. For instance, you can research for mainframe 3090, which is a mainframe I worked on. And let's see what kind of discussions they had about it. Okay, so they're trying to find, they were having discussion on how many users they could put on a VM. So on a, on a 4341, they had up to 150 VM users. On a 3033, which is a much larger mainframe, 450. Uh, 300 users. The CIA, a fact, uh, I think the CIA comes in good second 300 users, so I didn't even know the CIA was using VM back in the days, at least, maybe even today. Um, so Moco, this was running 425 users, and let's see what else. For 40 to 60 users struggling on a 4 megabyte 4341. So they had on a 4 megabyte RAM machine, they had 40 to 60 users. Not too bad. Um, here on a VM HBO, which is still 24 bit, they had between 1300 and 1400 users. Wow, this is just unbelievable. You can see here, VM is a very capable operating system. 1300 users. Um, yep. So all these discussions were were conducted over BitNet, and uh, with the very same protocol we're reviving now, which I call by myself just hnet and uh, all this still works note works file transfer works 
remote commands work. Um, I can, for instance, uh, just one last remote command. Mm, message. I can ask it, how do I reach Moshix 3? And then this host will answer me back, telling me what the connecti connectivity to another host is. So this way I can explore the network topology. I can build my own uh, understanding and vision of the network topology. So all these things work uh, because it's the same protocol. And uh, there's no reason why the HackNet people, the VMS people, shouldn't connect to this network as well. Uh, all we need is one or two people peering with me and then we can also uh, reach the VMS host, HECnet uh, host. And another thing we could do is somebody finds the drivers for NGE for Linux. I think they used to exist at some point. Uh, then we can also uh, exchange uh, information with Linux machines. So Linux NGE, let's see. Yep, it should be possible. So somebody could probably explore this and see the nomina. There's a gentleman there I know from um, his name is Neil Ferguson. He was recently interviewed by the IBM Mainframe podcast, which is something you should listen to. Um, yeah, I'm sure that we can make this work. Maybe I'll make a video out of it, um, getting Linux to connect to uh, NGE. That will be an idea for next uh, next video. I'll be talking to some friends. So yeah, it should absolutely be possible. I will uh, maybe make a video out of this and so we can show how we can connect the Linux to a mainframe um, over NGE. And I'm not talking a modern mainframe, I'm talking about very old mainframe, such as the ones we're running here. So um, I've just given you an overview of some of the possibilities of what's possible. And we can see that um, we can connect both old mainframes with the emulation of NG over TCP IP as well as modern ones. Because, of course, um, ZVM, uh, which I'm running here on my ZPDT mainframe, has already built-in native TCP IP NGE support. So I don't need to run any emulator. It can just reach out and connect to any uh, NGE host just from ZVM. So um, that's the beautiful part about the ZVM having a ZPDT machine. Um, but other than that, everything works just fine. I just give you an overview. And um, it's a lot of fun. If you want to appear with me or some others, please contact me and let me know. If you like this video, please do press on the thumbs up button. Always a pleasure to see those. If you have any questions, comment below this video. And see you soon again. Thank you.